brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In 1979, the number one R&B and the number one pop song in all of America was We Are Family by Sister Sledge. Anybody remember that song? It reached the number one on the billboard uh, for dance club songs, and it was the theme of the 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates. Why am I telling you this? Is it because I'm a huge Sister Sledge fan and I wanted you to know? No, that's, that's not it. It's because today is Welcome Home Sunday, and I wanted to remind each and every one of you that we are family. We are family. If you've heard that song before, it goes something like this, and I'm I'm sorry, I'm not a very good singer, but it goes kind of like, We are family. I got all my sisters with me. They they do it much better. (laughs) But if you've heard that song, you you know that it's got a a nice rhythm to it. It makes you kind of want to move. It's catchy. There's only one thing for our purposes today that I'd like to change for that refrain. I'd like to add, and brothers, we are family. I got all my sisters and all my brothers with me. I'm not a songwriter, but that sounds pretty good. We are family. You are my brothers and sisters. And more importantly, we can say that Jesus is a part of our family. In fact, Jesus chose to be a part of our family. Did you catch that in our lesson from Hebrews 2? In chapter 2, we're told that something remarkable takes place. That the eternal God of the universe says he is our brother. Lest we underestimate how amazing this is, how remarkable this is, and the enormity of it, we have to backtrack a little bit to chapter 1 to see just who this brother of ours is. In chapter 1, the author tells us that Jesus is the heir of all things. Jesus is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. Jesus is the one about whom the Father says, let all God's angels worship him. Jesus is the one about whom the Father says, the throne of God will last forever. Jesus is... Our brother is the one about whom the Father says, In the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. To think that this one, this one who has all of these attributes just listed, and many more attributes attached to his name, to think that this one chooses to be our brother is unbelievable. It's amazing. He actually wants to be related to us. That makes me think of that movie that you usually watch around Christmas by Chevy Chase, Christmas Vacation. In the movie, he, he's having a Christmas party for all his family to come. And you know how crazy it can get when you, all of your family comes, right? You have your in-laws, maybe they're a little bit snarky. You have your own parents there. You have the, the, the kids, the wife, everything going on. But to add to all of that craziness, another character comes along. The brother-in-law. And he's quite the character. And when he rolls in with his beat-up Winnebago and his kind of raggedy kids and their dog Snot, well, things kind of get a little crazier. You know, they say you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. Well, Jesus chose us as his family. He actually wants to be related to us. And why would he do that? I mean, if you think about it, we are the down-and-out brother-in-law who rolls in with our beat-up, messy, sinful, embarrassing selves. Yet God chooses to be our brother. And don't downplay what that means. Our lesson says we look to Jesus, the one who was made lower than the angels, for a little while. He had it all. He was living in perfect harmony and and unity with his triune family in heaven. In paradise, no sin, nothing wrong. And he chooses to leave all the glories of heaven to come down to earth 
to live in this sin-sick world. And he does that so we can tread through the filth and the garbage and the rubbish of this fallen world for you. To save you. This wasn't some extended weekend with the relatives. This was 30 plus years of him living with us and our disgusting sinful lives. And the reason why he did it was all for you. He did it to save you. He did it so that by God's grace he might taste death for everyone. Do you realize what that means? Jesus came here to be your brother. That's true. He came here knowing that you came with baggage. That's true. He came here knowing that you wouldn't choose him even if you had the choice to choose him. But he still chose us. And on top of that, he came here to do the very thing that you or I could never do. Suffer death and be crowned with glory. Yes, we can suffer. Yes, we will one day die. But our suffering and death will not lead to glory. Not on our own. But Jesus, his would. You see, our baggage, our not wanting to, really are not even being capable of choosing Christ is because of our sin. Since we are sinners, we are separate from God. That sinful separation doesn't mean that we're just apart from him, that we're not near him. It also means that when we die apart from him, we should go to hell. And that's the final and ultimate consequence of our sin. But Jesus came to do the very thing that you and I could not do. To suffer death and be crowned with glory. When he came to us as our brother, he did more than just leave his perfect, pristine paradise that we call heaven. He did more than just leave that behind, but he came here for us. He knew that our relationship with him had been broken. We weren't a part of his family. We were as far away from it as it could be. We had alienated ourselves from God by our sin. So Jesus came to repair that relationship. When he came to earth, he took on flesh and blood. And while he was here, he never sinned. But he went to the cross and was crucified as if he were a sinner. That's because his mission was to take on your sins and my sins and the sins of the whole world. And then he died. And, and I mean, he truly died. This wasn't just uh, he was sick or this wasn't just he was down and out for a couple of days. He died. And by his death, he defeated death. That's why he said with his last breath, it is finished. That word that Jesus says when he breathes his last is really very closely related to a word in our lesson. In verse 10, it says that God was leading many sons by bringing the author of their salvation, by bringing Jesus to his goal through suffering. That phrase, to his goal, is is a word that's very closely related to that word, it is finished. There's something that has an end in store. There's a goal to be reached. The payment for our sins was paid in full by our brother Jesus. It's finished. The suffering that was necessary for him to bring us salvation was done. The goal was reached. The mission is accomplished. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is why we can say that we are family. Jesus died so that we could live. He became our brother like us in every way, yet without sin, so that he could save each and every one of you. And then God calls us together through word and sacrament to bring us together as a part of his family. That's what God does for us. We're joined together as a family of believers. You are a part of this family. You will always be a part of this family. As long as we stay with God's word. As long as God continues to come to us through his word and sacrament. So we're not ashamed to call each other our brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's because God was not ashamed to call us his own brothers and sisters. And that's a wonderful blessing. Many people are ashamed of their families. Perhaps their father was a womanizer. Perhaps their mother was a lush. Perhaps, perhaps their sister was known to know too many men. 
Perhaps their brother was too many times in the back of a cop car. Or maybe there is some other reason why you're ashamed of your family. But if there's anyone who ever had a right to be ashamed of their family, it was Jesus. But he wasn't. Instead, he is the one who makes us a family. And he says right here that he's not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters because he made us holy in his sight. He's proud of us. He's proud of you. He loves you. He cares for you. And he's right here with us this morning, worshiping with us. Yes, even as we worship him, he is with us worshiping the Father. But he's here to do more than just to be worshipped and worship with us. He's here to give us something very important. He's here to give us a reminder of who he made us. When we started our worship service, we started the way that we do every worship service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We say those words not just because they sound good, but because they remind us of who we are in Christ. They remind us of our baptism. You know what baptism does for us, right? Baptism is when God comes to us to make us his own. That is when God places his name on us and says, You are now a part of my family. So as Jesus is here with us, he reminds us of our identity, that we are God's family. And he's here to give us some wonderful things, such as the forgiveness of sins, so that we never fear his anger. He's here to give us the promise of eternal life so that we never fear death. He's here to remind us of all of the wonderful joys that come through him so that we never fear anything when we're tempted. That is why we love to come to God's house. That's why we have this Sunday, Welcome Home Sunday, to remind each and every one of you that you have a place right here in God's house. If you grew up in a warm, loving family, you know what it's like to to go home. It's a wonderful feeling to be welcomed back home where you grew up. I know for me, any time I I come home during college or even as an adult, what I'd love to do when I got home was, was to take a nap. It just felt so relaxing. Like every stress in the world was gone. I was finally there. I could just just go to sleep and have rest in the Lord. Or rest in, in, in the house. And that's what we do here. Not, not take a nap. I, I hope you aren't sleeping right now. <laughs> but to have rest with the Lord. Have rest with God. Come here where we can find peace. Come to a place where we can find hope. Come to a place when we are feeling helpless, we can have help. Come to a place to be reminded that when we are lonely, there's a family right here for you. That's what this Sunday is all about. But perhaps you didn't grow up in a warm and welcoming family. Perhaps when you think of home, you're reminded of sadness or loneliness or lovelessness or pain. That's sometimes how Christians feel too. Some know the warmth and welcome of being in God's house, but others don't. Maybe they've experienced an unloving attitude or an unloving action. They might feel like they're not welcome here. So this is an opportunity for us to repent of our sins against our brothers and sisters. Maybe some of us have been wronged in the past. Maybe some of us have been given the cold shoulder. Or maybe you were upset about something silly like the color of the paint on the wall or the color of the carpet. Or maybe you're simply too selfish to consider how your words and actions really affect others. For whatever reason it was, brothers and sisters, now is the time for us to go to whoever we wronged and beg for their forgiveness. Now is the time for us, if we've been wronged, when somebody comes to us asking for forgiveness, we simply forgive them, just as God has forgiven us. This attitude of love and forgiveness and service to our brothers and sisters creates the kind of home that we long for. It's a place to find encouragement, a place to set aside all those stresses and and hectic schedule that life has to offer and find true rest in the Lord. Not just 
away from everything, but spiritual rest, the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. That's what God offers us. That's what God says when when he means, I became your brother. I want to give you everything that you couldn't have on your own. And so he died for us. But the truth is he did not stay dead. He rose again, assuring us of his victory to tell us that death truly had been defeated. That we don't have to fear death or its consequences anymore. Instead, we are welcome home to be a part of his family. We are family. Let's treat each other like we ought as brothers and sisters in Christ. Why? Because we're family. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.